Okay, let's go ahead and figure out what the square root of 4 over 3 is equal to. Well, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're definitely going to have to know how to answer this question. And the question is not uh, take your calculator and put 4 divided by 3 and then get the square root and get some sort of decimal. Now, it would make sense that you would understand that. That's not what we're talking about here. So put your calculator away. What I'm looking for is a very specific answer, okay? And the topic here is not only square roots, it's something called radicals. So if you're taking any sort of uh, radicals, I got to spell that right. If you're taking sort of any sort of algebra course, this is the bigger topic. Radicals are what we think of as a square root symbol, but we can take a square root symbol like, oh, here's the square root of 7. If I put a little 3 up there, now I have the cube root of 7. So this little symbol right here, which we think of as a square root symbol, is really a radical, okay? It's a radical. Again, this is where most of you are going to be um, studying uh, this particular topic. And uh, anyways, so if you want to go ahead and try the problem, put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the answer here in just one moment. And then, of course, if you don't know how to do this problem, I'm going to show you the exact steps to be able to do this. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, you can't be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you out there that are struggling in math. So if you're down on yourself, you're like, ah, I'm terrible at math, I'm a bad math student, I'm telling you, you can do well, all right? But what it takes is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you big time. Now, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a math section, uh, on it, a dedicated math section, something like the SAT, ACT, uh, maybe uh, the ASVAB, a teacher certification exam. Uh, most of you out there don't even realize that you're going to be taking a test like this uh, if you're going to college uh, or any kind of uh, additional uh, schooling or vocational program because there's a ton of entrance exams, placement exams, certification exams. So anyways, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare for those exams. If you homeschool, I have outstanding middle and uh, high school level homeschool math courses. As a matter of fact, they are award winning, so you can check that out if that interests you. Now, hopefully you have your own great math notes, right? Because this is critical to being successful in math. But if you don't, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the answer here. So the answer that I'm looking for is this. So the square root of 4 over 3 or the square root of 4 thirds is equal to 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. Anything different than this, you will not get full credit. Uh, on uh, your quiz or test, if that is the kind of situation, this is the one answer that your math teacher would be looking for. Now, if you got this right, I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A++. Matter of fact, I'll give you 110% and a few little stars to make you feel extra special. Uh, that's very, very good. And this is a pretty easy problem, but if you didn't get this right, if you don't even understand this, we'll stick around. It's not that difficult. Okay, so... How do we get from here to here? Well, that's what I want to show you right now. Okay, so here is the work, but let me explain to you a couple of the key things that are going on here. So here we have the square root of 4 over 3. We're trying to figure this out. The first key thing that you need to understand is this. So when we have a fraction, we're taking the square root of fraction, we can write one big square root over the fraction, or we can take that one big square root and break it up into two small square roots. So we could take the square root of the numerator, in this case, it's square root of four, over the square root of three, because some of you might be saying, oh, I know what the square root of four is. It's two, but I can't get to it because it's one big square root. Well, if you break it up into uh, a square root of four over the square root of three, well, now you can get to it. And that's kind of um, indicated by this bigger property. Uh, the square root of a over b is equal to the square root of a over the square root of b. So the things that you're going to need to know in algebra are these properties and uh, rules of radicals. This is one key one that really allows us to go from here to here. Okay, But now that we're able to do that, we're like, oh, okay, so now I can go the square root of 4 is 2. So that's getting someplace. So you're like, all right, that's good. And then I'm just left with the square root of 3 right here. Now, how many of you had this as your answer? 2 over the square root of 3. Let's go back up here. 
And let's say you put 2 over the square root of 3. Okay, let's say that was your answer. If this was your answer, I would say uh, I would give you maybe 5 out of 10 points on a test or quiz. So some of you be, might be like a little angry about that. You're like, 5 out of 10 points? That was pretty close. Well, no, there's a major problem with this answer. Okay, this answer is not good. We need to put it in this form, and I'm going to explain that right now. Okay, so step one was to get uh, the problem down to 2 over the square root of 3 by using this property right here, breaking up that one big square root into two smaller square roots. But why is this a problem? Well, we have 2 over the square root of 3. Well, the square root of 3 happens to be a number, a type of number called an irrational number, okay? So anytime you have like something like the square root of 3 where you're not going to be able to get like a nice number like the square root of 9, you get 3, okay? Everybody knows the square root of 9 is 3 or the square root of 4 is 2. Well, the square root of 3 is going to be some sort of decimal on your calculator. Well, this is what we call an irrational number because this decimal, just like the decimal pi, some of you out there might know it's like 3.14. Well, not really. This decimal goes on and on and on and on forever. It doesn't repeat and it doesn't terminate. In other words, it just keeps going randomly all the way to infinity. So how could I possibly write this whole decimal point out? It's the same thing with the square root of 3. Okay, if I ask you to write this whole thing out, uh, I think it's going to be 1.71. Uh, I don't have my calculator in front of me, but whatever it is, it's going to go on and on randomly. doesn't repeat and it doesn't terminate. So how could we take a number like 2, okay, and divide it by some number that doesn't stop? Well, okay, I'm going to divide this by 3.1415 all the way to infinity. It, it, it's impossible, okay? We can't do a division where the denominator, all right, is doesn't repeat, doesn't stop, because I just will never, ever know that number. So that's why you cannot have an irrational number left in the denominator. It doesn't make uh, any sense mathematically. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to fix this thing up. Okay, we're like, all right, uh, uh, well, we have to do something with this problem. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by 1. All right, so this number multiplied by 1 is what? Well, any number multiplied by 1 is that number. So it's just 2 times the square root of 3. That's pretty easy, right? It's something called the multiplicative identity. Any number times 1 is just the number itself. But the one that we're going to use is a fancy one, all right? It's a little creative one. And uh, let's go ahead and show you what that one is, okay? Well, this is the one that we want to use, all right? So this is the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Any number divided by self is what? It is 1. So really what we're doing here is taking 2 uh, over the square root of 3, and we're going to multiply it by 1. So we're not breaking the problem, but why are we doing this? Well, this is uh, something called rationalizing the denominator. This is very, very important. And the whole purpose is to get rid of that square root in the denominator. So here's how it works. So here you have the square root of 3. We're going to multiply that denominator by the square root of 3. But if you multiply the denominator by the square root of 3, you have to also multiply by the numerator by the square root of 3. But just remember, you're not breaking the problem because this divided by this is 1. So again, we're OK. All right, now, what is the whole point of doing this? Well, let's take a look at what happens when you multiply uh, 2 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. So how do you multiply fractions? It's going to be uh, the numerator times the numerator. So this is 2 times the square root of 3. That's easy. So let's talk about the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Well, hopefully you understand that the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is equal to one big square root with these factors here. So that's 3 times 3, which is the square root of 9. Of course, the square root of 9 is 3. That is the answer. Again, this is a property of um, radicals that you need to understand. Square root of A times the square root of uh, B, I can write that better, is equal to the square root of A times B. This is the stuff you need to know along with that other property and even additional properties in algebra. So now we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is going to be equal to 3. This is the final answer. And notice down here in the denominator, I do not have a uh, an irrational number. I have a beautiful, nice whole number, 3. So that's what you're going for. Okay. So if you got this answer right here, that's pretty good. Okay. But now, Hopefully, you understand why this is a big no-no, having an irrational number in the denominator. And this comes up over and over again in uh, more advanced problems. you got to look out for that. 
And anytime you have an irrational number in the denominator, we have to address that, okay? All right, so hopefully this video helped you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need additional help with square roots and radicals, let me give you a couple suggestions. One, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. And this stuff, I go uh, pretty heavy duty in any one of my algebra courses, uh, namely Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Um, I certainly touch on this in my pre-algebra course as well. But any of those courses, whatever level you're at, will definitely help you out. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.